Good evening, everyone. It is August 19th, 2014, Tuesday. I wanted to share a couple things with you uh, off of Google Earth. Also, want to remind everyone that uh, you can monger fish and you can monger war, but you cannot monger fear. And anyone who's been through any uh, kind of extensive therapy will know that uh, only you can make yourself scared. Okay? So, it's better to be scared than to be unaware. So, uh, listen, use your own judgment. If you think it's time to freak out, like maybe if Ebola hits the U.S. or some shit like that, then, you know, better to uh, know and respond than be the last to know and the first to die. Moving along. So, tonight, I want to go over swarms, earthquake swarms, because there are some very peculiar things going on right now. We continue to see this uh, horrible climb in uh, earthquake numbers uh, in Oklahoma here, and this is a perfect example of fracking-induced earthquakes. If you look around this and the entire area uh, where all of these earthquake swarms are occurring here, uh, you're going to find uh, fracking sites. Now, here's an area that's uh, got some working pads. Uh, out here on the plains, they tend to be more square and they're they're closer to the road, whereas when you're in uh, more mountainous regions like Pennsylvania or, or uh, in the Appalachians or somewhere, you tend to see uh, more circular hillside pads with roads uh, squirming, wandering off of them. So uh, now here's some pads that are in the process of being uh, decommissioned. You can also see on the left there are much older pads. So they've been fracking in this area for quite some time extracting the natural gas, uh, breaking up the ground below the uh, surface, and uh, expecting, here's one still got its tanks, although the, uh, the actual well itself there, you can, you can see where it used to be, uh, and the tanks just haven't been removed yet. But we're not here to do uh, necessarily a story on fracking. I've got something much more interesting if you can hang with me. But I do want to show what, uh, what fracking can, can do. Now, you look at all those squares there. You think those are homesteads? Took those are houses sitting on there? No, no. Guess again. You can see the typical, the gas storage tanks. There's um, just mile after mile of this stuff. And uh, if, if we think we're going to break up the ground, uh, it doesn't matter how many miles down, there's going to be collapses of the uh, new cavern roof, the caverns that we've created out of what was once a honeycomb of uh, independent chambers. Now, here's another one that can, uh, can be a problem, geothermal. I, for a long time, I thought this was a, a fracking site, but someone pointed out that it was, in fact, geothermal. And uh, again, same thing. Look what it's doing to the environment. Each of these yellow dots is an earthquake. Uh, an orange dot uh, is a quake that's occurred within the last 24 hours, and a red dot within the last hour. Now, here you, you get down here. The, fortunately, these are real high quality, so you can get down. And you can see the pipes. Uh, and they, they're, they're pumping water down into, the, into a magma chamber or close to a magma chamber where the pr temperature is still very high, comes back up as steam, which then runs the turbines, which you can see that huge uh, swarm there. Now, to look at a more normal swarm, we look up here at uh, Alaska. Uh, Alaska's pretty much always got some swarming going on. It's, it's natural and normal for that area. Uh, we see it all the time. Uh, there was a, an area that was unusual up in uh, further northern Africa, uh, Alaska. Now, here's a swarm in the Aleutians. Those, are, again, the Aleutians all along that, that fault line there tend to get uh, a lot of rumblings. But one of the points I wanted to get to today was looking at Yellowstone. Now, you know, to have swarms here is not unusual. Look at all the reds. Look at all the reds. Those are all within the last hour. There is really a massive uh, something going on there. They don't have to be huge, the, the quakes, but the, the sheer number of them. Things are dropping off the, the, the chamber uh, ceiling and dropping in or sliding off or some other way disturbing the ground. Uh, what I want to, here, let me uh, pause this for a second. What I want to point out here, too, is that the spacing of these are, are all around the caldera. Those are right almost in the middle. Now, usually when you're looking at Yellowstone, you'll see a swarm here or a swarm there, or maybe a big one here and a big one there. This is all the way around it, which is uh, a little disconcerting. Um, all right, now let's continue. Another uh, interesting swarm, the lesser of the, the good ones I've got here, was down here. Uh, I think this is New Mexico, but near the, near the uh, Mexican border. Now, there's only two here now uh, this week, but uh, I've been watching it in the past, and there's been a, a strange number of, of swarming uh, activity. If you look around, there's nothing else. No other, that's, that's a perfectly stable area, that no other earthquakes, until you get over to California and, and up into uh, uh, Nevada and so on. So 
That's a very strange location to be having one, let alone a swarm of them. Uh, and again, there's only two this particular week. Now, here's the juicy. This is a strange swarm I've been noticing by the Oregon border. Look at those, all those red ones there. That there something happened just a little while ago, and I wish there was somebody over in this part of uh, the regions. So Oregon is right above us. Uh, there's the California border right there. Uh, but it just, w there's nothing there. There's nothing there. If, if you go down and you look at that area, there, there's just nothing there. And uh, look at that. That is freaky. So, again, I, I want to point out that it isn't always the strength of the earthquake, but the number of them, which can be an indication uh, of what's going on uh, down within the Earth's crust. Now, here again is a normal swarm. There, as long as I've been watching, there's been swarms going on in this area. They shift around, they move around. Funny how they don't tend to go much further to, to the right or over through that crack in the left there, but just seem to be all right there, which is kind of weird. So, to close up today's report, I do want to show one additional thing. This is a fellow concerned citizen who uh, does uh, reports on uh, radiation and uh, who I've been following for some time along with a handful of others. Uh, I think he does great reporting. Uh, and I wanted to show some of the uh, footage that he's captured along the Pacific Northwest. I'm from Oregon, and when I watch this, it just, I can't tell you how much it broke my heart. Uh, and it's so easy to look away and ignore it and, and not want to, you know, deal with it. And it's not because you're afraid, it's because you're sick. You're sick to see what we're doing, and it's not fear, it's concern. So I'd like you all to uh, experience a little bit of concern here with me, all right? Thank you. I hear some of the uh, before, and now I'm going to switch to the to what they found while they were there. And I encourage you to go to a site. I'll put a link down below. Thank you, and that's your swarm report uh, for August 18th, 2014. We're just saying there's only 1% of 1% that should be there, and that it... The tidal pools that I worked in as a diver, you didn't. You're a snorkeler. I spent six hours a day on the ocean floor working with these critters year after year. And you're not even going to try to go up to your tide pools and show what we showed. And you're going to say that there's all kinds of life, but you avoid the tide pool, the 5,500 species, the 600 algae. And you think that I care about you. I was just trying to be reasonable with you, trying to get you to understand that there's other things there besides what me and you found. We're missing at least 5,500 species on the coastline. And we're getting reports from all over the island and pictures of the tidal pools being empty. But look at the tide pools. You can't go down a Sergeant Bay or Smuggler's Cove and show me a tide pool and neither can't connect the dots too. In Victoria, go show me a tide pool that looks like that. You can't friggin' do it. And so you know that and you go down and you show the bigger feeder fish Further up the food chain, we're talking about the stuff in the tidal zones. We're not saying it's all gone. We're saying there's not much left, and none of this is left anywhere. There's no help to anything that's left out there.